For today's video, I'm going to show you how to be a graphic designer who uses the Linux operating system, or more specifically, how I go about it personally. And I'll be doing a little more than simply telling you to use GIMP and Inkscape. I'm going to address some of the biggest problems that you'll run into as a designer who uses Linux and how to work around them. So I have a little bit of history with Linux myself. I used it as my primary operating system for three to four years back in the early days of this channel. In fact, some of my earliest tutorials were recorded using Ubuntu, and I eventually moved on to Windows because of how frustrating it was to use Linux back then, especially as a creative. But over the years, Linux has only gotten better and Windows has only gotten worse. And now we're at this point of convergence where Linux is, in many ways, a better experience than using Windows. The biggest problem now is the lack of access to the Adobe Creative Suite, which is a deal breaker for most creatives. But I'm going to show you a workaround that will allow you to use Adobe software on Linux later on in this video. So graphic design is a really broad term that can mean a lot of different things. So I just want to define the context for this video. I primarily do linear 2D design, working with vectors and pixel-based imagery. To do this sort of design work as a Linux user, you'll mostly be using one of four applications. GIMP and Krita, which are for raster-based photo editing, Inkscape, which is for working with vectors, and Scribus, which is for desktop publishing. All of these applications are perfectly capable, but they do have some shortcomings, so let's address what they are and how to work around them. The first problem that you'll run into as a Linux-based designer is working with the CMYK color space. If you're going to be a graphic designer, then you'll need the ability to prepare documents for print. And to do that, you'll need to be able to export them with the CMYK color profile. Unfortunately, Inkscape and GIMP lack the ability to do this natively, but there is a simple workaround. So let's have a look. So let's go over how you can export design files with a CMYK color profile using Linux-based design software. I'm first going to show you how to export CMYK vectors using Inkscape and Scribus, and then after that I'll show you how to do the same using pixel-based raster images such as PNG and JPEG. So to get us started, you can see I have this sample design that I put together in Inkscape, and this is all vectors. If I zoom in, you can see uh, it's all vector pads. I've converted all of the text to pads. And let's say you needed a CMYK copy of this vector design. Unfortunately, Inkscape isn't capable of doing that yet because it only works in an RGB environment, but that's okay because we're going to export this as a PDF document and then convert it using Scribus. Before we do that though, just make sure you come up here to view, go to display mode and choose no filters. You want to make sure that your design looks okay in no filter mode because if you're using any kind of filters or Inkscape specific traits, it's not going to transfer well over to another application like Scribus. So if everything looks good, just switch this back to normal. And now we're going to save this as a PDF document. So we'll go to File, Save As, and I'm going to save this as Logo, and I'm going to choose from the file format. I'm going to choose .pdf. I'll click Save. And if you want to change the DPI of your document here, if you want a larger DPI, such as 300 or 350 or whatever else, you can do so here. I'm going to leave mine at the system default for Inkscape, which is 96, and click OK. And now we can close out of Inkscape. Okay, so we have logo.pdf. I'm going to right click this and go to open with. And the application I'm going to open this with is Scribus. So I'm going to find it in my list. There it is, Scribus. Click open. Click OK to import the file. And now I'm going to export this. So I'll go to file and I will select export and I will choose save as PDF. And in this menu, come over here to the color tab and where it says output intended for, change that to printer. And what that'll do is it'll attach a CMYK color profile to it. And I'm going to enable spot colors. And if you want to use custom rendering settings, you can tick this box as well. And you can choose different values for each of the CMYK channels there. I'm going to leave that disabled though and just go with the default and click save. And it's going to ask me if I want to overwrite it because I'm leaving the same name there. So I'll just click OK. And now it's set. So I'm going to close out of that. And you can see here, if I could open this file, we now have a vector design with a CMYK color profile. Now, I understand it's saved as a .PDF document, but uh, PDF is also a vector format. So the vectors are still there. 
And a little trick that you can do is you can rename this to another extension. So I'm going to rename this to .ai. So instead of it being a PDF document, it's going to be .ai, which is the Illustrator format. And the reason why this works is because .ai is basically Adobe's proprietary format for Illustrator files. And it's basically just a PDF file with Adobe's proprietary wrapper around it. And it works the same way, which I'll show you momentarily. And we now have a vector design file with a CMYK color profile. Now let's go over how you can do the same using pixel-based images, whether it be PNG, JPEG, or TIFF. So I have this example design here. I made this with Inkscape, but this could have very well have been made with GIMP. And this has an RGB color profile associated with it. So I'm going to close out of this. And here's the file right here. It's businesscard.jpg. I'm going to right click this and go to open with. And this time I'm going to choose Krita. And click open. And once the design is opened in Krita, I'm going to go to Image, and I'm going to choose Convert Image Color Space. And up here, you can choose the model. I'm going to click this dropdown, and I'm going to choose CMYK Alpha. And I'll click OK. And it's going to change it to a CMYK color profile. And now I can go to Export, File, Export. And I will export this with the same name, and I will overwrite it. I'll leave the defaults in place. And now we have a JPEG file with the CMYK color profile attached to it. Now it should be noted that these workarounds are limited. So using Linux as a designer is probably not ideal if you primarily design things for print. It works for me because I do logo and branding design and rarely do I design something that goes directly to print. And when I do, I can easily use Adobe software to prepare it, which is what I'll show you how to do in the next segment. The biggest thing preventing designers from openly embracing the Linux platform is the lack of compatibility with Adobe software. Adobe's Creative Suite is the industry standard for design, and if you want to be a graphic designer, you need to have access to it. As a hobbyist or as someone who occasionally designs things in a limited capacity, you can easily do without it. But if graphic design is the main thing that you do, there's just no getting around it. Sometimes you'll have a client that wants you to work with an Adobe file that they already have, or maybe you want to work with a template file that only works with Adobe software because it was created with Adobe software and it contains Adobe specific traits that don't transfer well to other software, you simply need to have access to the Adobe suite. Thankfully, there is a workaround for this using what's known as a virtual machine, or a VM for short, which is basically just a simulated computer inside of your computer. It allows you to install the Windows operating system within a container so that you can essentially run Adobe and Affinity apps on a Linux machine. So now let's go over how you can work with Adobe and Affinity apps on a Linux desktop using a virtual machine. So there's a lot of different applications that you can use for this. The one I'll be using for this demonstration is known as Oracle VirtualBox. So I'm going to click on that icon to launch it. And from here, you can launch your virtual machine. Now you can see here, I already have a Windows 11 virtual machine added. If you want to do the same thing, you'll have to click the Add button and add one yourself. I'm not going to go over how to do that in this video because there are uh, a few steps involved and it also requires that you go into your BIOS and enable virtualization for your CPU. So there is a technical aspect to this, but it is worth the effort if you want to give it a try. And there are a lot of great tutorials on YouTube that'll show you how to do this. In fact, that's how I set this up myself. One thing to keep in mind is that you have to have a computer powerful enough to run another computer inside of it, because that's essentially what you'll be doing. Now for my computer, I'll put the specs up on the screen here in case you're curious what I'm working with. I built this PC about five years ago and I just recently upgraded the GPU. So I have plenty of resources to dedicate to this virtual machine. For this VM, I was able to allocate 12 cores, 16 gigs of memory and 250 gigabytes of disk space, which is plenty to run Windows 11 efficiently. So now I'm going to click the start button to launch my virtual machine. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to take this window and move it off of the screen. And now we have the virtual box loading. And you can tell by the jingle and the 
lock screen, we now have Windows 11 running inside of a container. So I'm gonna log into my account. So now I'm running Windows 11 inside of Linux. I even made the wallpaper the same to make it look more consistent. So I'm gonna open a folder and I've set up a shared folder between my VM and my Linux desktop so that I can send and receive files easily. And here is my shared folder. In fact, here is the logo that we just made using Inkscape and Scribus. Uh, we changed the extension to AI, so Windows thinks this is an Illustrator file. I'm gonna click on this to open it. I'm gonna minimize the folder. Okay, so now that this is open, to make life a little easier, I'm gonna go into full screen mode by pressing Control F. And now I am in a full screen Windows environment where I can work with my document easier. And as you can see here, I am basically working with Adobe Illustrator inside of Linux. And if you look over here to the top left where this tab label is, you can see the CMYK label indicating that the changes that we made in Scribus did indeed work. This is a vector, uh, this is a vector document with a CMYK color profile. So let me zoom out. And another cool thing about this, let me get out of full screen mode. There's something called seamless mode, which removes everything but the application that you're running. So I'm gonna press Control L to enter seamless mode. And now it looks like I'm running Illustrator inside of Linux natively, which I think is pretty cool. And in my opinion, this is just a much more efficient way to work with Adobe software as a Linux user, as opposed to doing something like dual booting. Okay, so let me get out of seamless mode and I'm gonna close out of Illustrator. And I'm going to go back into my folder and now I'm gonna open up that business card design that we created before. But this time I'm gonna open it with Affinity Photo. So let me right click it and go to Open With and I will choose Affinity Photo and I'll minimize this. And there we go, now we have Affinity Photo running in Windows 11 in Linux. And I'll press Control L to go back into seamless mode. And there we go, I'm able to work with Affinity software just like I can with Adobe software. And if you can see this label up here, I'm not sure if you can, the text is kind of small. This indicates that this document is indeed a CMYK document. So the changes that we made in Krita did indeed imply. And once I'm finished, I'll just get out of seamless mode. I'll close out of Affinity and I will power down my machine. And now I can close out of this and I'm finished. Now it should be noted that because of hardware limitations, this is not the ideal way to work with Adobe software. If you're going to be a Linux-based graphic designer, you have to be willing to commit to using the open source alternatives, such as Inkscape and GIMP, for the bulk of your work. This solution is for those rare instances where you absolutely need access to Adobe or Affinity software. For example, as a logo designer, I do most of my work in Inkscape, but I do occasionally like to use warp transformations in Illustrator, and I also like to use Photoshop to edit my mock-up templates. So for me, this solution is perfect. If you plan on doing any kind of heavy editing though, or you need to use the Adobe software primarily, then Linux might not be the right operating system for you. If you would have told me five years ago that I'd be using Linux as my main operating system, I'm not sure I would have believed it. But Linux has come such a long way just over the past few years, and I don't know about you, but personally I don't like Windows 11, and I'm not crazy about the direction in which Microsoft is taking it. I was very excited to wipe it from my hard drive and install Fedora Workstation with the GNOME desktop environment, and this is the configuration I'll be using going forward. In fact, I've been using this setup for my daily workload for the past couple of weeks, and the more I use it, the happier I am that I made this change. Now, I do plan to continue using my MacBook when I record and edit tutorials because I also make tutorials for Adobe and Affinity software, and I don't think it would be practical or efficient to do all of that inside of a virtual machine. The important thing, though, is that Microsoft has effectively been eliminated from my life, and if you're looking to do the same, hopefully you found this guide helpful. If you have any questions or feedback, just leave a comment below. And be sure to join my mailing list to receive over 200 free design templates, including logos, icons, avatars, infographics, and so much more. As a subscriber, you'll be the first to receive the free templates that I send out each month. I'll have some information about that down below, and as always, thanks for watching.